Class Mondays. We have our church fast day, uh, Tuesday, June 6th. And I think we're getting to the place our, our fast days are is it every first Tuesday or every Tuesday? Every Tuesday. Church fast days every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. So listen, you know what? I'm not the smartest. I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. So it took me a little bit. I was just reading numbers and reading the month and the number, and then it dawned on me hey, that's a Tuesday again. Maybe there's a pattern here. Uh, church anniversary, August 11th and 12th. And then we want to start, we want to start preparing now for the different places that we want to go uh, to Hot Springs, to, to Ark. Uh, and eventually, I think I heard somebody say Jerusalem. Now, that's that's going to be a, that's going to be a work. That's going to be a lot of barbecue dinners and getting out there with the pit, fish plates and, and, and 5K marches and everything else. But it will be an experience. So we want to we want to start, uh, uh, Pastor had a, a good way of putting it, and I can't remember it off the top of my head because when you start throwing too many numbers at me, like I'm looking at on the screen, and they just go up there into the ether, and then they just fall where they may. So I'm not even going to try to repeat it. But if you start putting back a little bit now, we can fly up there, we can go have a good time, get our hotel room, so that way we don't have the 15-hour drive. You can just get on the plane, fly, get off. Uh, and then get on the plane. We can stay a little bit longer this time. We may not have to miss service as much. Amen. Um, but we want to go because, listen, if, if, if you don't ever get out and do anything, then you will die on the vine. If you just come every day, you will get bored with everything that's going on. So you need to get out. You need to go see other people. You need to go see other places. How many of y'all have been to Indiana? I've been a couple of times. How many of y'all just gone and hung out in Indiana? See, when I go to a place, I don't like to, I really don't like to go to the, to the rich parts of the place. I like to go see where the people are, to see what the people really live like, so I can have an understanding of what really goes on. Because I learned that the, the resort areas are different than the... Uh, 
than the places, not not the hood. I'm not talking about just going to go where the people live. Amen. So we don't want to belabor that point, but please, please, please start putting your money back. It will hurt a little bit sometimes, but the reward will be astronomical for your spiritual life, for your physical life. It'll do you some good. To, to get out and go see somewhere else, go see something different. Uh, I came back from Indianapolis this last time and I got accosted at work. And they said, you seem to be the same kind of poor that we are. So I said, well, I am. But then you go on these trips. <laughs> yeah, because that's where my priorities are. Your priorities are buying stuff and driving all over the place. I like to go do things. Amen. So if you, if with a little bit of planning, uh, again, I don't want to blame you, but with a little bit of planning, uh, and we want our usher to come, uh, we can go. You can have a good time. We walked up and down the Indianapolis' version of the River Walk and saw the structures that they put in the, in the water and I don't know what they're supposed to be. <laughs> they, they were very abstract, but uh, they had some, uh, some murals and stuff. And we worship God as well. Amen. Amen. Listen, your offering, I know a lot of people, I'm going to give this one thing and then we're going to take it. Uh, when, the, when the people brought their offering to the priest, and I didn't do a good job of touching this last week, your offering had to be without spot. It had to be the best you had because the offering wasn't really being judged so much as it was the person bringing the offering. It's not about the money. Ask God what to give. God will tell you what to give. It's about you. It's about your character. It's about what you want from God. It's about what God has done for you. That's what offerings about. We ain't even talking about money. It's not about money. It's about you. Amen. You're in the hands of the usher. thank you for the blessings, God. Lord God, we ask you, God, to move on our hearts today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Walk with us, God. Be with us, God. Lord God, we know, God, that you will give us blessings and money. We know that you give us blessings and things. But God, give us blessings in our, in our, our everyday life, God. Give us blessings in our spirit, God. Lord God, give us blessings in our mind, God. Keep our mind, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep our bodies, God. We'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want our pastor to come. We're going to turn it over to his hands. And I know I saw the title earlier, and y'all are in for a treat. Because uh, you, you know and I know that he can preach. So let's stand. Let's give him a hand as he comes. In the Lord, wonderful. Praise God. All right. The children can be dismissed. Song say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Anybody believe that here today? Praise God. He's always that way, whether I believe it or not, whether I feel like telling him that or not. Amen. He's still great and greatly to be praised. Glory to God. We don't want to hold uh, things over too long this morning, but we do want to turn our attention this morning to the book of Matthew, the 20th chapter. 
Matthew chapter number 20. Glory to God. I think that God has a word to say to his church today, to his people. God always has something to say to his people. Amen. Look at what it says here today, and may not make sense in the in the beginning, but it will. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Praise God. That shall ye receive. I want to preach this morning for a few moments on the subject, coming into your season. Amen. Amen. Coming into your season. Amen. Amen. Not your neighbors, but your season. Praise God. The worship leader asked a while ago if you can believe. If God said it, I believe. Anybody believe that you have a season in your life? Praise God. You can be seated in the fear of the Lord. Coming into your season. I know that a lot of times that we feel like that uh, the word of God has got to be a rebuking word. That we do so many things wrong that God just rebukes us all the time. But there are seasons, God's so balanced, that God actually uh, encourages us. He pushes us. He wants us to move forward. God wants us to be blessed. And I want us to grab onto that here today. I was thinking when I was uh, 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 studying for this message today that God was giving me, uh, the song says, Is My Living in Vain? Somebody say, of course not. Praise God. Say it like you really mean it. So you got you to gotta put some heart and soul into the way you feel. Yes. Praise God if, if things are going to happen. Glory to God. Is my living in vain? I want to tell the world, of course not. If God asked me that, of course not. Praise God. The question was asked the prophet, can these dead bones live? Praise God. Sometimes things get so difficult to where we don't know if they can or not, but we know that God knows. And as long as God knows and as long as I'm with the Lord, things are going to be all right. Praise God. And so I have realized, and, 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 and at some point, if you haven't, you will, and I, we still strive to realize that God's ministerial instruction to me, I don't know what it is to you and what yours is to you, but God's ministerial instruction to me is multi-directional. Most pastors, as a matter of fact, have been and will be used in all aspects of the five-fold ministry. Praise God. And so, you know, they will be apostles, they will be pastors, they will be teachers, they will be, pro uh, uh, God will use them in prophecy, God will use them in evangelism. But in all aspects, for the most part, at any, if they pastor any time at all, they're going to be used in all fivefold, in all parts of the fivefold ministry. And not only that, in several different gifts of the Spirit, uh, at one point or another, God is going to use them. I'll say this also that it, the deeper that any child of the king any saint of God get in God amen that there are different gifts that God will use you in if you give God the ability to use it. Right. Praise God. Are you hearing me here today? It's not all the time woe is me and this time I've had my hand stuck out but there are times amen and seasons that come into your life amen that God is wanting to use you at that point. Are you hearing me here today? And you've just got to be available. You've got to be ready for the Lord. Amen. Whether you feel like you're ready or not, you've got to be in season or out of season. That's why I use the parable of that old fig tree. 
when Jesus walked up to that fig tree, it wasn't time for that fig tree to give figs, but the Lord was in need of the fruit of that tree that he had made and created amen, for his service at that time. What about you here today? Praise God. Amen. We can't wait all the time until I'm ready and I feel like I'm ready when I am not the judge, but it's God that tells us when you are ready. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm coming into my season. May not be when I feel like it, but it, but 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 I'm coming into my season. Hey, but it's not the greens, it's not the pears, it's not the apple, but it's the one that planted the seed that determines when you will be ripe. Am I right? I know when I planted you. I know the sun. I know the draw in the pool hey, of the atmosphere, and I know what time. Hey, Amen. You are supposed to bloom, and the time you're supposed to blossom, and the time you're supposed to give off fruit, because hey, Amen. He is the keeper of the vineyard. Praise God. And you just have to know when your season is and when your time is. In Jeremiah 3, amen, verse number 15. The Lord never skips a beat. He knows what it is that he is doing all the time. And we have got to get uh, on the same page with the Lord. If he says on Wednesday, it'll be on Wednesday. If it says on Friday afternoon and I didn't plan it, amen, it will be on Friday afternoon because God planned it. He said, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. God's going to give you knowledge. Praise God. He's going to give you understanding with that. And we know in Proverbs, he already talks about the fact, amen, that you're going to get knowledge. You're going to get wisdom. You're going to get understanding. In other words, God is going to equip you. So when you come into your season, then you're going to be ready. Praise God. I want to tell us also that without even coming into our season, it's always a season, amen, to be used of the Lord. Sometimes we use the fact that it's not my season to give us an excuse not to excel. But I said the other day, I said on Wednesday night, uh, that God, even in the midst of the valley, God ex still ex expects us to do exploits. Are you hearing me here today? There's not one time in your life in one day, whether you're going through anything or not, uh, that if a devil rises up, God doesn't want you to rebuke him. Yeah. Pray. Can I say that again? I don't care how sick you are. If somebody else comes and says, I need for you to pray for me, how dare we say, amen, how can I pray for them when I'm sick? You better rise up, amen, and speak to whatever that sickness is in that other person's life is despite, amen, your weak condition until it has got to go in the name of Jesus. Praise God. When that person walks up to you and says, I need you to pray, I want you to know you're coming into your season. I'm going to say that again. You're coming into your season. Praise God. I don't feel like it, but you're still coming into your season. I don't feel like going to work, but you still got to go into your job. Praise God. It's your job to come into your season. So, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know the, the, the Lord gives us times. He gives us, you know, and, 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 and he has given us people to lead us. And God holds, see, look, when God holds the Sunday school teacher, or he holds a pastor over late uh, for overtime duty. I mean, it's time, what I'm saying is when everybody else is going to bed, then, and he thought he was fixing to go to bed, he has to stay up a little bit later because God says, hold on, can I talk to you for just a few more moments? Or he calls him in extra uh, hours uh, uh, while everybody else is still asleep. He says, you've got to get up early this morning and go in for duty. In other words, uh, I know you wasn't going to get up till 6, but I'm waking you up at 2 in the morning because I've got some things I want to say to you. Amen. But you know, and a lot of times that sounds good coming from the pastor because we say, wow, we have a spiritual man of God and, and we know that God's going to deliver to us. But what about... Uh, when God says, it's your season for prayer, it's your time, amen, to wake up and pray for the man of God. It's your time to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I know you had a toenail ache last night when you went to bed, amen, but you got to get up and pray for him, amen, this morning. Are y'all hearing me here today? your season because if the proud if the pastor is going to have power then you've got to have some power 
And if you've got to have power, I've got to have power. And we've got to share this power and this anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, amen, the enemy doesn't want this church to have revival. Amen, the enemy doesn't want this church, amen, to be successful. The enemy wants to destroy this church. But if we're going to have the power to destroy, see, what happens is a lot of times, you know, amen, the enemy will lay siege, amen, around uh, 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 you know, a fort or around a city, amen, to cut off the supply chain of food, to cut off the supply chain of extra soldiers coming in. And you've got to break through sometime that line and tell the devil, no, you got to let hold. Amen. There's not going to be a siege. Amen. We are warriors and we're more than conquerors. Praise God. And so he sends the man of God for your benefit. And, and, then, and then when you are strengthened, then he says for you to strengthen your brothers. I said to strengthen your brothers. What's your season when you're strengthened? Then it's time for you to strengthen your brethren. You see, he sends the man of God, first of all, for your salvation. That's your repentance. And then for your work in the vineyard, for your work in the kingdom of God. We talked about that the other day. And then uh, he sends you... Uh, he sends him to help. And in my ministry, what I've tried to do over the years, what God has given me to do is not only to give you the salvation plan, to tell you to stop acting like the devil, to stop acting like carnal people and acting like the world and, and, and you know, and, and try to put on Christ. Praise God. Number one. Number two, to encourage other people to do the same thing. But not only that, outside of the church, we've tried to get you to apply a practical application of success in your life. In other words, just because you're in church doesn't mean you turn off your intellect and all you think about is the Bible. But you ought to be an example, amen, of a walking dictionary, if I may say it that way. You ought to be a walking example of an encyclopedia. What I mean is you ought to continually be trying to make yourself better. You ought to continually be trying to learn. The more you put here, the more God can extract and use for his kingdom. Are y'all hearing me here today? Just because you're retired don't mean, amen, that I'll retire and I exclude myself from all of life and humanity. Amen. But that means that God has given you years of experience now, amen, to use to win the lost. Amen. Praise God. He just had your boss man pay you to train you how to be a witness, to train you how to be mature, to train you how to be, amen, uh, uh, an uh, uh, uplifting, upstanding American citizen, amen, that's worthy to be used of God. Praise God. Just because you get ready to retire. I want to tell people you're coming into your season. Yes, that's right. You're coming into your season. Yes. Praise God. And so it's been my privilege and my job not only to, to, to lead you spiritually, but to try and to motivate you to be the best on your job. To encourage you and to, to, when, when things are going tough in your life. To, to, to try and help you to live right for the Lord. Most men of God, that's what they're trying to do. Women of God, that's what they're trying to do. Saints of God, to live holy, amen, to allow change of the Holy Ghost to happen in your life. And I know sometimes there's things we hold on to that we, amen, it's just a tug of war with the Lord and we're not trying to let it go. But it's my job to preach it and to teach it, amen, without fear or favor. Amen. Mm. Sometimes you say, well, you know, I, I heard you say that and you're picking on me. Well, uh, you know, uh, trust me, uh, ap after this many years, I, I never have and will not, uh, even if I counsel with you, you won't find me waking up in the morning and saying, well, you know, I'm going to preach on them today. Mm. You don't have that kind of, I'm not going to stay up at midnight to think about who I can pick on. I'm going to bed. So when the Lord wakes me up, whatever he, I focus on, and you know what? I found out a lot of times when I get ready to say something, sometimes the Lord says, go ahead and say it. You know they got a problem because I hadn't thought about what I'm going to say and thought about who is having that problem. Even though I may know they having that problem. You know why? Because I focus on what God is trying to say. 
A lot of times people miss things in prophecy or miss things in word of knowledge because it's them trying to fuss at people. <clears throat> Rather than hearing from God. And so you get it right every time when you're seeking the face of God. I remember one time, and I've said it before, it's been many times, but, but I remember one time sitting on the front row, and, and I know the pastor had called me in his office, and he had talked to me about it, and, and I'm going to say it again because you need to hear it, and the devil don't, you know, he ain't going to discourage me from saying it. But the pastor had called me in his office, and it wasn't anything that, that I was sinning over, but it could cause me you know, to use this mouth of mine to cause other people to sin. And so, you know, I went out and, and we were jesting and joking. And, you know, sometimes that can be bad. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I was never at a loss for a joke about somebody. And, you know, so, you know, at any rate, and so he says, he, 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 he calls me in and he talks to me about that a little bit. And I can tell, you know, I can tell off on myself now. Well, we got to doing that and, and, and myself and another individual with a couple of other people. And it didn't turn out so well for the other people. Well, you know, that was on a Friday night and I'm holy Sunday morning. Praise God. Who thought about that even anyway on Friday night, you know, by Sunday morning? Well, the pastor gets to preaching the message, the Pharisee on Sunday morning. And I'm sitting on the front row, just like I do. I got my paper, and I'm ready to take notes because he's always spitting out some stuff. And, uh, you know, and I'm hurrah and hooraying and praying and, and amen and amen, kicking my feet up, trying to keep my shoes on because he's preaching so well. And he gets to talk about the Pharisee, and he gets to starting to, to get off into my pocketbook, and, and he gets to get into my head and get into my I mean, the Lord is working on me. Praise God. See, and I'm like, oh, Lord, okay, God. All right, God. Okay, God. You're getting a little close here now. All right, God. All right, now I'm squirming. Okay. You know, and I'm thinking, now somebody's been talking to him about me. Praise God. Y'all ever thought that way? I started thinking that way. And Lord... At the height of me thinking that, I'm like, I know somebody's been in his office and I'm not kicking my feet up anymore and I'm, boy, I'm in my, you know, I'm fixed to go to the dentist because I'm getting TMJ from biting hard. And he comes off that platform and, and I'm sitting on the front row and he comes right up to my nose. He said, you're a Pharisee. Just like that boy, he points at my nose and I'm looking at his finger. <laughs> And um, boy, and I take it to heart. I can hardly hear any more of that message, Sister Teresa, because I know he was talking about me. And after I went to his office, I said, somebody been talking about me. He said, what are you talking about? He said, what are you talking about? And I started telling him, he said, I, have no, I didn't even see you. He said, what you need to do is go pray. See, you know that God was talking to you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to some of y'all here today. Praise God. I don't have the time. You know, I'm just trying to hear from God. I never forgot that. That had to be back around 81, 82, 83, somewhere off in there. That's how long ago that was. See, some things you live with, amen, because, you know, that, that, that holds you in check. And you ought to live with whatever the man of God tells you. That's how you stay successful, amen, in the Holy Ghost. There ought to be some change. What I'm saying is that God has given me some things, sometimes to discipline you, and other times to help you to discipline yourself to live for God, that there are some things you just don't, you don't allow back in your life, whether other people allow it in their life or not, you're not going to allow it back in your life. Why? I mean, because it, when your season comes, you cannot let that stuff be in your life. Praise God. You've got to come into your season. You've got to be empty. You've got to be ready for the Lord. But see, and, and, and I have to help you to become strong in the Lord. Have a strong mentality where people, the enemy can't use your relatives and your friends and your co-workers, amen, to break you down and to crush you and, and to cause you to lose your spirit inside of you. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost, but I'm talking about how you feel about yourself, amen, to cause you to lose it. You are somebody in God. Praise God. When you come into your season, God's going to use you because of the strength of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're going to use a man of God to put into you. If God believes in you, that's enough. Amen. 
You just have to understand if he believes in there's got to be something in me. Amen. You got to start speaking those things. You got to speak to yourself. They teach salesmen to look in the mirror and to train yourself. Listen to what you say. Listen to how you speak. Amen. Listen to what you're, the things that you are, watch the things you're doing. And then to help to improve yourself. Get in the mirror. And tell yourself I am somebody in God. We do that. See, the, we don't have a problem doing that uh, in the world. They call it primping. We get in there and that same little piece of hair is in the same place and we're still moving it. Praise God. Am I right? I, I'm, I know that I am right about it. People putting on, they still, it's red. Fire engine red, still putting it on. It's like, my good, well, if I lick one, then it's got another coat of paint on it. It's just like my car, it scratched this with another coat of paint. And then when you can see the crack, let me get another one out. I'm putting another coat of paint on. See, they do that in the world, but what about us getting in a mirror and saying, I am a child of the king. Amen. I am intelligent. I am smart. I can succeed. I can learn. Amen. God does believe in me. Amen. My wife believes in me. My, my, my kids believe in me. Amen. My co-workers, but my boss, I know he fussed at me, but my, my boss believes in me. Yeah. Praise God. Why? Because see, when you come into your season, I have told those I'll continue to tell people you prepare yourself today for the promotion you're going to get on your job tomorrow. Are y'all hearing me here? But I could never, you can and you will be promoted. Yes. Praise God. But you've got to be ready when you come into your season. And so I have tried to strengthen those and cause those to think successful in the godly realm, in your personal realm, and in the business realm. Apostolics need to have a mind for business. Church folks need to have a mind for business. Yes. Praise God. When you get ready to go into business, if whether it's whether it's hiring yourself out for wages or whether it's entrepreneurship, you have got to have a mind that you're in it for the long haul. Yes. Yes. And it takes work. Yes. I'm gonna start my own business. You better be ready to work longer hours. Amen. And you can't cut corners when you go in it for yourself. Amen. Some people are professional stand-arounders. They can stand around and look busy till it's time to punch the clock to go home. Others say, I'm bored. What else can I do to make this company better? They're paying me wages. And I'm going to make sure I give my best. You know why? Because when you, if you have the mindset to do your best at work, you have the mindset to do your best at home. If you have the mindset to do your best at home, you have the mindset to do your best as a friend. Because that mindset crosses channels in your life. It never stays in one area of your life. If you're going to feel good in one area of your life, you ought to feel good about in every area of your life. Am I right about it? See, because, you know, the Bible, it talks about, you know, that, that, that if you sin in one area, it's not just going to stay there. It's a principle, whether it's good or bad, just like if you, you reap what you sow, whether it's good or bad. Praise God. And so you've got to train, you've you got to get yourself, you've got to, amen, you've got to get yourself ready when you come into your season. See, the thing is, you're going to come into season whether you want to or not. Because you don't determine that God does. And so there's times when, when you're down and out, I have to be an uplift to you whether I want to or not. Whether I feel like it or not. And every pastor don't feel like fooling with everybody all the time. <laughs> Praise God. But when he does, and you know he didn't feel like it, then you have to in turn when other folks are in the church, amen, that didn't go to him, that come to you, you in turn have to do what he just showed you how to do when he did it with you. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't that something? Now it's my turn. Somebody say it's my turn. Glory to God. I wonder if you're going to run somebody off when it's your time because you didn't feel like it. Mm. No, it ain't fooling with me. I just, you know, I mean, every day is the same. <sighs> My goodness, it's been three months. They still look like these people ought to know how to. And it's been three years with you. <laughs> oh, God, don't complain when you're coming into your season. 
coming into your season doesn't mean all the time. You up here saying, I'm looking for a miracle. Uh-uh. Sometimes, sometimes it's when you don't feel like it. Your season is all season. They have tires that they sell that I used to buy all the time because it didn't matter whether summer or winter. I didn't want to keep buying tires. They call all season tires. And we've got to be all season saints. That's what the fig tree didn't understand, that the sun and the moon understood when it spoke and said, no, it's time for you to be still. No, we have to, amen, no, 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 we're supposed to be over here. No, I, I need you to stay here. No, but it's time for us to be over here. Yeah, but if we're going to win this war, amen, we've got, you've got to stay right here. Amen, whatever God says do, amen, then that's what you have to do because, amen, your season is there and the season has to stay and remain if somebody is going to be blessed coming into my season. My season is when God calls me. My season is when God says it's time for me to receive instruction from the Lord. My season is not what I feel like doing for the Lord, but when God needs me. Your power comes from being able to stay still sometime. Your power comes from being able to pick up and move when God says pick up and move. Your power comes when it's time to blow your shofar. When, amen, the way that God says blow your shofar. Your power comes, amen, when your heart is on the Lord. Praise God. You want to know when power comes? When I can lay some stuff down that I don't want to lay down. And God says lay it down and never pick it back up again. That's where your power comes from. Because if you got stuff you can't lay down, it has power over you. People say, well, I ain't got no problem with that. Our church don't preach against that. You ain't got no power over it. Glory to God. I laid it down 40 years ago. Don't get me wrong, I had my struggles with some stuff and mine wasn't yours. And yours is not the person next to you. Am I right about it? So you don't lift your chin up and, you know, you know if the weatherman says it's going to be rain, then rain is coming down through your sinuses because your head is so high. Now look at me. Praise God. But it ought to be down where you can pray. Amen. See, but it's my job to, to help you to apply a practical application of the word to your life. And then for you to help someone else to apply the, practi the practical application of the word. When, 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 when First Lady finishes with this discipleship course, it's not to sit back and get a certificate and wave it six months later and say, I went through discipleship. No, it's for you to step out there and to, to walk in whatever you were taught. You should be learning it so you can say, hey amen, I'm, I'm trying to learn this because I'm going to have to tell somebody else. What if 45, 46 years ago, what if in 1976, hey amen, I just looked and said, well, hey amen, this is all good. Hey amen, I appreciate Brother Frank. I appreciate Pastor Riles. I appreciate all of them and never learned that you would have never been here today. Praise God. And a lot of devils wouldn't have been cast out. A lot of people wouldn't have been healed of sicknesses. A lot of word would have been spoken. Sitting in Austin one day, amen, at a service that, uh, that you know, with the uh, uh, diocese, the, the council we were starting, and had never seen the lady. And, and the young man was him seeing, and the Lord said, that lady right there has cancer. Doctor just told her that. And I just walked over and told him, hold on one second. We're going to pray for her. She got cancer. That lady is still alive today. That had to be 10 years ago. Instant. Praise God. Was it season when I walked into that place? No, it wasn't my season. Or, um, well, let me back up. It was my season. I just didn't know it. God didn't know. I mean, God didn't tell me I was coming into my season. But at that very moment, the see that and that lady walked into, I mean, that was a season for healing. A season for blessing. I don't know. Amen. See, you got to be, there's different seasons. Amen. It's just not for ministry, but there's a season that God uses to heal people. A season God uses to bless. A God see a time that when God picks you up out of the mullet grubs, out of your rut. But if you don't come out of that, that mud hole, when the time comes, it becomes a rut. And then you're mad at God trying to say, why ain't you ever lifted me up? Amen. You were not worshiping him when you came into your season and he just left you there and you stayed in the mud hole. And it became a rut to you. But, but don't worry, you'll have another season that he's going to come to bring you out of that. 
And so there's practical application. And then, and then there is a time when you hear me talk about, you know, uh, 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 you hear me talk about wealth and retirement and things like that. I'm trying to push you. I mean, you ought to put aside a little bit. Uh, I heard Minister David saying earlier today, you know, about, uh, you, you know, we're trying to get you ready to go out of town. Save $25 a month, that's $300 a year. Go a long ways toward an airline ticket. Save $50 a month, that's $600 a year. Your airline ticket is paid for. Praise God. If you just set aside a little bit every month. If you don't eat at McDonald's twice that month, that's your $25 right there. Praise God. If you put aside, amen, for your children, $25 a month, by the time they retire at 65, they'll be a millionaire. Amen. Praise God. The rule of 72, which is what banks use. That's why they can give you, you can give them your money. And then in, 30, in, in, in three or four years, they're putting a building up. And you still got a note on your house. Praise God. So it's about wealth, and we're going to do some of that in the future. Now that we've seen what we, what we can do with technology, with Minister Darren, that was trial. Praise God. But we want to bring some people in here, amen, that can help this church, that can help you. I can't teach and train you everything. I said that 30 years ago, but I can certainly bring people in to help you. And I'm not trying to be everything to everybody. Praise God. And so we can bring people in that are great at different things. But I want to tell you to do something that will set yourself apart. Amen. Do something that will set yourself apart. Yeah. Don't just settle to be the norm, the average. Praise God. But do something. What are you? I mean, I don't know. You know, you may be the best, the, the best wearer of green. I don't know, sister. I'm picking it, sister. I'm, I'm, I'm picking it, sister Grundy. She loves green. Praise God. She loves green. Uh-huh. It sets her apart. Now we know, you know. Let me ask you this. See, I went through a lot of things that the pastor does. And, 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 and we're going to probably go through some more in the future. I've got a ton of things to talk about today. But I, I think we get the gist of what I'm saying here. And in 10 minutes, I'm done. But we've talked about a lot of things that the pastor, that the saints, that the first lady, that we're to be for other people. What we strive in ministry to be, a motivator, an encourager. To help you to understand that God is a lifter of your head. To lead you toward the Lord so you can, you can not only obtain salvation, but to retain it. Which is the number one thing in your life that's being filled with the Holy Ghost. Repentance of your sins, Acts 2.38. Not only that, but working in his vineyard. What would you give for a professional individual that could do all of the things that we just talked about. The pastor, what God calls him to do. The first lady, the leaders in the church. What would you give for that? Zip Recruiter has said that uh, uh, it depended on the counselor, the type of counselor, and the experience of that counselor. That it could be anywhere from 39500 to $101,000 a year, but God sends it to you through the man of God, through the first lady. He even uses you to counsel, to uplift, amen, other people. Go do this, go do that, and you might be able to get a job. Try this and try that, and, and no, don't be down. Hey, let's pray. No, lift your hand. No, let's, you know, all kind of things that God is to us. What would you, what would you pay God's just trying to help you come into your season with the uplifting and encouragement and practical application when you're down and the strength and the motivation and cause you to be a success. Praise God. What would you pay for a motivational speaker that major organizations uh, bring in to motivate their people? Uh, executive speaker. <laughs> Uh, dot com has said that motivational speakers can go anywhere from 10,000 
to $100,000 a speech. Praise God. Depending on who you are, what would you pay? But yet God is sending you on Bible study nights. God has given you on Sunday mornings encouragement. He's giving you strength. He's giving you instruction. He's giving you motivation. He's giving you uplift. He's doing all of that for you when others are charging you for it. Praise God. Why? Because God knows there's going to be a season in your life that he can use you. He knows there's going to be a season in your life when you're going to need to be encouraged. A season in your life when you're going to need a pickup. A season in your life where he's going to be able to, that he's going to need you. A season he's going to put something in your mouth and on your heart, amen, to give out to somebody else. God knows, amen, when you're going to be coming into your season. Praise God. And so we've just got to know with the Lord. In Matthew 20, real quick. We're reading from 6 through 7. But I, I want to say, I, I want to go back and just uh, um, look at Matthew 20, 1 through 2. And he can put it on the board and keep up if he'd like. But uh, uh, just in passing, he had six different groups. Number one. In verses 1 and 2, group 1, he called them early in the morning to go into the vineyard to do a work. We said the other day, you have a purpose, amen, but you just have to reclaim your focus, amen, to look at the purpose that God has called you for. Amen. you got a purpose. See, a lot of our purpose a lot of times is what we do every day in life with it. Amen. What our heart is. How, I mean, how we feel. Amen. When I try to help this person, that's your purpose. Amen. God, see, that's you want to know who you are? Amen. That defines who you are. It's your purpose in life. Amen. Doesn't mean that there's other things that God doesn't give you. But I need I need to hurry. And so, so uh, uh, <clears throat> But what you just need when it's time to come into your season to learn to push and to press toward the mark because that pressing will carry over into other parts of your life. It'll overcome laziness. It'll overcome mediocrity. It'll overcome, amen, you'll get drive. You'll get initiative. When I wake up by myself, I get up by myself. And if nobody else does, I'm going to do it. That's initiative. And drive says I'm not going to stop when everybody else stops. Amen, because see, successful people do the things that unsuccessful people are not willing to do. And you'll hear that over and over in business. Praise God. Those that succeed do the small things that others are not willing to do. It's a thin line between success and lack of success, but it's a difficult one. It's a lot of work in that little territory. Amen. So what I'm saying is your future is not tied to the limitations of your past family generations. If you press, you can get past that. And so that first group went in the in the morning, in the early hours. And then in verses uh, three through four, three and four, that second group went about nine o'clock in the morning. And then in verse five, he went back at noontime. And then he went back again at three. And then then you know he went back uh, um, in uh, in verse six. He went back for that, I'm sorry, that fifth and final group at 5 p.m. just before his closing hours. Different people had different times, and so I can't be upset with you because you're not at the time in, here, in this garden working as long as I'm working and the time that I'm working. But the issue is I have had an agreement with the Lord that this is what I'm going to do at this time. This is my season, amen, that the Lord has called me into the garden. What I'm saying is sometime during the day, every one of us has a season. We can't sit back and say, well, I don't have anything to do for the Lord. You have something to do for the Lord. I mean, you have, he's called. You may not have went in. Uh, you may still be standing idle. And he's wondering, why are you still standing here idle? Because no man called you. But the other groups went in and you had the same opportunity. Amen. To go in then. You just didn't go in, but I'm back again. Amen. This time, amen. Are you going to go in or are you going to stand here? Amen. And not be rewarded when everybody else is rewarded. And stand by and watch everybody else, amen, be rewarded for what their labor they've done during the daytime Hallelujah. coming into your season and so it is and 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 we can I, I'm, I'm i'm ready to close 
because I, I need us to, to focus on what it is that the Lord is drawing us to into our season. Romans 8, and we won't, we won't belabor the point, 38 and 39. The question is asked, what's stopping you? What is stopping you? He says, I'm persuaded that death won't stop me, life won't stop me from being uh, successful. Angels, principalities, powers, things that are happening right now, current event, things that are present. I'm not going to freeze up because I think I might not be successful, so I don't know what the future holds, and I, I'm scared to move forward. That, that, that's not going to stop me. Neither height nor death nor any other creature is going to separate us from the love of God going to separate me from coming into my season, going to separate me from doing the will of God, going to separate me from ministry, going to separate me from feeling even the Holy Ghost in my life, from feeling good about myself when God has told me I can do that. Amen. It's not going to separate me from conviction when God is trying to get me to stop doing what I'm doing and to move forward and to get up and live right and do the right thing. It's not going to stop me from being encouraged and uplifted when people are trying to help me to be what I need to be, but yet I just want to still stay down in the, in the doldrums because it's easy to stay down and to mumble and to complain rather than to get up and come into my season. Praise God. And so what's going to stop me? No, nothing is going to stop me. Glory to God. Somebody say, I can do all things. I can do all things. But I can't do them by myself. Amen. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If God says that you can, you can. I believe. God said. Uh, doesn't that song sound pretty? But we have got to understand that we need to start believing. You know, I said it a while ago, but five minutes and I am done. Praise God. But we have got to grab this. Praise God. Y'all better be grabbing onto this. Oh, See, because, you know, you know, because depression is going to come your way when, you, when you're not succeeding in some things. And, and I've been saying this for 30 some odd years. This is not pie in the sky. Whatever you can think and believe, God can do exceeding abundantly above all of that. What is it that you want in life? that's attached to the will of God, you can have. I said in 1979, I wanted a big BMW. I didn't have the job then to buy a big BMW. But it didn't stop me from dreaming. Hello, world. That's carnal, some people preach. God wants you to have fine things. Come on here. Get a life. Amen. People want the preacher to be poor and broke. Well, I got news for you. I'm not going to be poor and broke. <laughs> Take your money and go somewhere else. I bought me a BMW. Amen. Huh? And I didn't buy my wife's big Mercedes with a church money either. You say you're full of pride. No, I'm trying to show you how to come up. We have, we have motivated. It's not about me at all. I'm on the downside of life, folks. What are you, what, right? Anything I'm going to do, I better do. What I'm trying to show you is if you can dream and believe God and have the will of God in your life and stay submissive and humble, it's his great pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom. It's not just salvation, amen, but God gave you the ability to obtain knowledge and to succeed in life. He said what? Let me, let, let me show you what I'm talking about. In Genesis 1.28, he says what? In, in Genesis 1:28, well, you need to be poor and broke. You need to have holes in your shoes if you're going to be a saint of God. You need to dress like, you know, you know, Aunt Annie. I want this church. You women ought to dress like you, like like success. Amen. Praise God. I don't care how you dress as long as you cover up. Amen. You can wear the latest models of dresses 
not men's clothes, dresses, but cover up. Keep it holy. Remember, the pastor's job was to talk about holiness, change, etc. See, you ought to, people, when you walk down the street, people ought to say, my goodness. See, but your clothes shouldn't be the thing to make you feel good about yourself. As we talked about a while ago, the God ought to be the thing to make you feel good about yourself. We're not talking about being so heavily minded you know it's really good. We're talking about being balanced. See, and God blessed them, and God said unto them what? Look like little orphan Annie. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And then go out there and get some others to look like you. Not only to look like you, but cause everything around you to flourish. Money ought to come. Groceries ought to come. Things ought to come. Praise God. Every, it's not just one thing. It's multifaceted. Are y'all getting this right here? See, some people think, well, it's just money. Well, you ought to have a bunch of friends, too. Amen. You ought to have a, you ought to have a, a whole lot of good attitude. Any, anything positive, you ought to have a whole lot of that. Praise God. Because, you know, you ought to come into the, what I'm saying is, that ought to be your season. When you come into your season, then you're going to be able to, all of that will take place. In Psalms 37, 4 and 5. God wants to invest in you. He wants to invest in you. He gives you the strength, you go to work. You go to work. It doesn't say anything about paying tithes in the New Testament, so we don't have to pay tithe. I give no offerings. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. I hear people teaching, well, you know, the Bible says you don't pay. The Lord said in Numbers, that it's a statute forever. It wasn't just the money he was looking at, it's your heart he was looking at. Amen. Number one, number two, you're never gonna work no business deal with God and not give him something. Right. Oh. He ain't never gonna be God without being number one in your life. Yes. Yes. That includes your finances. Okay. So he didn't leave will a man rob God in the Old Testament in Malachi. He bought that with you, but he expects you now to, somebody mentioned about Moses and the rock. When Moses, you know, instead of doing it God's way and stepping out on faith and speaking, he was still touching when you ought to be speaking. In other words, you ought to have a higher understanding of what God wants in your, in your life. See, when you start coming into your season, there ought to be some things you leave behind. Why are we still squawking about money? And then that's a big deal to people. No, I still give unto the Lord, not just tithe, but I give. Amen. Because he doesn't want, he wants a cheerful giver. Yeah. When I come into my season, he gave us the ability. So, 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 so he invests in us. In Psalms 137, what does it say? If you delight yourself in the ways of the Lord, you can read all verses 1 through 5, then he will give you the desires he's investing in you. He's an investor. He made you and he's investing. Let's stand this morning. In Genesis 4. We understand again in Proverbs, he gives us the ability to obtain knowledge and wisdom. He has different professions, doctors. And, uh, I don't know, doctors make a lot of money. But he's the master physician, he still heals. Counselors make a lot of money, but he's still the one that gives the peace that passes all understanding. And we're squawking about money with him. Pay a lot of attorneys, a lot of money, whatever you ask. $5,000 starting off for defense. But we ask God, please help me. Please help me. Mm. So when you come into your season, you realize what God is. Cain never understood that. But yet Cain was blessed. We read in Genesis 4, especially 14 through 24, where you start seeing the offsprings of Cain and things that they could do. God gave them that knowledge, their profession. When you start maturing professionally, biologically, in this world, God expects you to do that. 
and to succeed in life. Be fruitful and multiply. Be the best on your job. Get that next raise. If you're called to entrepreneurship, you better be praying. If you call for entrepreneurship, you will succeed. It's your season. If somebody else is already doing it, it's not your season. Don't you step out there into entrepreneurship. Stay on your job. Sometimes he creates storms to move you from that one to a better one because we get, we still on that thing so long, we just holding tight and God is saying, yeah, but I got something better for you.